thank you for watching me once again. Today we're coming with something more elaborate. Uh, a warm eye and warm lips. My eyes I got accomplished with the new Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette, which I love, by the way. And I paired the eye look with some orange lips to give the whole look kind of a monochromatic vibe. So if you want to learn how I got from a plain Jane face to this situation that I have going on here, just keep watching. But first, do not forget to subscribe and to give me a like if you like what you see. So you know what, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, grab that popcorn and that glass of wine because it's gonna be a long one. My face is fully moisturized and plump. So I'm just gonna prepare the skin for the foundation. My Becca Backlight Prime Filter, this guy here see it yep and you're gonna take a, probably like a pump yeah a pump of it I don't need more than that because I only put this on my cheeks and the sides of my forehead prepares my skin for the foundation because yeah you can feel the tackiness on it so um, next thing that I do because my t-zone can get a little bit oily what I do is I put a little bit of the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer, my favorite smoothing primer for the T-Zone. And I just put a tiny, tiny bit, because this thing goes a, li a little tiny bit goes a long way. So you just put a little, little tiny bit like this. And this is where I put it. And with small circular motions and these two fingers, I blend it in. I'm just making sure I'm filling out those pores around my nose. Today I'm gonna be using uh, two foundation products. My Smashbox of Studio Skin and a tiny bit of the Hourglass Banish Stick. Yeah, I'm gonna be using those two and the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, I have a tiny bit of discoloration around this area, which is hormonal. Yeah, hormones going crazy as you enter your 40s and almost your 50s. Uh, here and here, here and here. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's basically where I want it. Only those areas. And I'm going to take the other one, the Smashbox Studio Skin, and a couple pumps of this. Yeah, so tonight I'm going out. Uh, it's our date night. My husband and I, oh, almost every week we have a date night. We go out, we enjoy ourselves, we either go to the movies or we just go have some supper, or whatever, we walk around ta town and yeah. So anyways, we take our time together seriously. Now I'm gonna go in my beauty blender and you're gonna, excuse me, you're gonna notice that my beauty blender's dirty because this is the second time I'm filming this video. I filmed this entire makeup tutorial uh, a few hours ago, but you know what happened? My microphone was not connected, so none of the audio worked. So I'm filming this for the second time. So, which is why you're gonna see that my beauty blender's already <laughs> used and uh, my makeup brushes. I'm just basically doing the same look for the second time. Oh my God, what should I get into? Let's make sure this foundation is evenly distributed. The studio skin is basically, uh, it's a very hydrating foundation. I like it because uh, like, I told you in my previous video, I have very dry skin. And I live in a very dry climate. I live in Northern British Columbia. Uh, uh, yeah, in Canada. And here we don't have any large bodies of water close by. So it's really dry. Our summer has been extremely nice and fairly warm and, and uh, yeah, it's been beautiful. Uh, today we're having a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. And um, summers are extremely short. <laughs> yeah, our summers usually only last from May 
to September. Because our winters are, if we are lucky, are only from October to April. Let's conceal these uh, raccoon eyes. One of my favorite concealers is this guy here. Well, are these guys here. Um, yeah, the Urban Decay Weightless Complete Coverage Concealers. I use two shades. I use light and medium neutral because uh, the combination of those two really suit me right now. But when winter comes and my skin becomes a little bit lighter, I only use the light one. Like I was saying, we've been having a beautiful summer. Uh, I live in a small town called Fort St. John, which is on the northeastern part of the province of British Columbia. This is basically an oil and gas uh, oil and gas town. Those are the major activities here. And uh, it's, a, it's a small place, like I said. We only have here around 20,000 people. The closest concentration city, I mean city, like big concentration of, of population, uh, would be Grand Prairie, which is two and a half hours uh, going south, uh, southeast from here. Or the capital of the province, which is Edmonton. And Edmonton is seven hours from where I am right now, from Fort St. John. So it's quite a long drive to go to Edmonton. And that's where the Sephora and all the cool things are. So yeah, every so often I plan my trips to Edmonton, but I, I end up being exhausted after those long drives. That is something I'm still dealing with, getting used to. Long drives uh, totally kill me. But when it's summer, it's kind of pleasing to drive. When I don't like driving, it's when it's winter. And winter can be extremely stressful. So I'm gonna blend that concealer in. Yeah. Blend, blend, blend. I'm just gonna blend it on the bottom. Yeah, my eyes here. I'm not gonna take it to the eyelids on the top because up there, I'm gonna use another product as a eyeshadow primer. Okay, so yeah, like I said, Edmonton is quite far. I need to, I need to do a couple more trips to Edmonton before uh, summer's over. Because I have a daughter in Edmonton. I have three kids. Well, they're not kids anymore. They're grown ups. But my middle child, Stephanie, she lives in, in, in Edmonton. She's a social worker. So every so often I go and I visit her and I, yeah, I, I like living in the city. I'm not gonna deny it. The only reason I am in Fort St. John is because my husband works here and I wanna be with my husband. So I decided to move here and be with him. So I was saying that tonight, we're going on a date night. There's not much to do in this town. There is not, unfortunately. But we take our date night seriously and we like spending time with each other. Because we think that um, part of um, keeping a relationship alive and growing is, is spending quality time together. So now we're gonna prep our eyelids for the eyeshadow and I'm gonna be using the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. This guy here. Yep. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna take a MAC 195 brush, concealer brush, that I had already previously used today. And um, I'm gonna just paint my lid. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't found any other shadow primer that I like more than the paint pots, to be completely honest. I find that the paint pots not only uh, make my eyeshadows last, oof. So, you have to apply it immediately, blend it in, because this is something that, this product dries really, really fast. So after we have applied our 
eyeshadow primer and we already applied our concealer. We want to set that up so it doesn't start creasing. I love this brush, it's so fluffy. It has the, the, the perfect firmness. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't move around your concealer yet it applies the powder nicely. And yeah, I'm gonna be using the Laura Mercier translucent powder that everyone raves about because there's a reason why everyone raves about it and it is a nice product. What I like about this product is that it does not dry my skin. My skin doesn't, you know when you apply powders your skin usually ends up looking dry and sometimes even kind of crusty. <laughs> No, it doesn't happen with that powder. And in case we have any fallout, yeah, we want to put a generous uh, layer of powder. Huh? Oh, geez, I'm out of frame. <laughs> Let's do the same here. So I was saying, I live in a very small place. I have to admit that Coming from a very busy city like Santo Domingo, I was born in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo. Coming from a very busy city, moving to a small place like this was quite shocking to me. It still is. And I've been in Canada for nine years. I've been here for nine long winters and I'm still trying to get used to it. So, after we are done with our uh, foundation, uh, and setting that concealer and pre prepping our face for the next step. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Goof Proof Brow Pencil for Benefit in number four. And I'm gonna fill my brows. I'm gonna fill those sparse areas, <laughs> which is basically my whole brow. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, fill my brow. And get it out of the way. Now I'm gonna do the trick. My brows are microbladed, but it's fading, it's fading off. So I need to go and get them retouched. But I do enjoy that microblading thing. I find that it's really convenient because with us people that don't have much hair, it really does help waking up with brows already. <laughs> Uh, but also, um, when you are uh, when you are adding product to your brows to make them look a little bit fuller, it helps a lot that you already have the outline. So you just have to kind of just work around what you already have. So yeah, let's get those brows on. I also have two other kids. Like I said, Vanessa is. Um, lives in the Dominican, she's a makeup artist, you probably know her, and if you don't, you should get to know her. She, her Instagram is Bane Makeup Artist, and she's really good at what she does, huh? That's my daughter Vanessa, she still lives in Santo Domingo, and then I have the youngest one, because Vanessa is the oldest. Then I have the youngest one, is, which is Jose. He's my only boy, and uh, he lives here with us because he's working here. He's on his second year, <clears throat> second apprenticeship year uh, in welding. And uh, yeah, he's with us here, but he's planning on moving to Edmonton pretty soon. So let's see how that goes. Once my two kids are in Edmonton, I'm gonna be traveling there way more often. So yeah, I miss them very much. So I just basically live here with my husband. Welcome to my face. <laughs> Guess what? It's a shame that the first video did not work because you would have seen my true first impression reaction to this palette. This thing, this thing is amazing. Yeah, and you're gonna see it perform now. It is the new Urban Decay Heat. Naked Heat, and the colors in here, not only are they beautiful, but they perform like a dream. So now you're gonna see me play with them again. What are we gonna be using? What should, oh, you know what, I'm gonna basically do what I did the 
previous on the previous video that I never you'll never be able to see because they had no audio. So I'm gonna go with this guy here. And look how I, I'm only tapping a few times here. And uh, I'm gonna put this on my cream. Mm-hmm. And I'm just using a regular fluffy brush. In this case, I'm using a, one of the brushes from the Sunny Akasha collection that I got from a dear friend. My dear friend Ida <laughs> gave me this, uh, and I love it. So I'm just gonna go in uh, with uh, small circular motions and windshield wiper motion. I'm gonna apply that color all over my crease area, concentrating on making it darker on the outer corner of my eye. The pigmentation in this palette is crazy, crazy. Let's do the same with the other eye. You know what, yeah, let's do the same here. But because if I do this, the video is going to be way too long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish one eye and then I'm going to finish one eye and sh showing you how I do it. And then the other eye I'm going to do off camera. So now I'm going to use a flat shader brush. And in this case, I'm using the MAC 239, that guy there. And I'm gonna take this shade here. It's called um, Dirty Talk. Yeah, this guy here, Dirty Talk. Here. Yeah, and I'm gonna swipe my brush across the, sh the eyeshadow a couple times. And this I'm gonna pat all over my, uh, my lid here. See the pigmentation, like, it wasn't necessary for me to wet my brush to get full pigmentation. Look, without wetting the brush, I'm almost getting that foiled finish on my shadow. Imagine if I wet the brush. And see how I'm, ha I'm not having, I'm having very, very little fallout, if you notice, like just a tiny bit. So, but with the powder that we put there, that shouldn't affect our foundation. But do you see, do you see how my my lid is on fire now. <laughs> yeah, it is on fire. So now I'm gonna take a more detailed uh, shader brush. And uh, I wanna give some dimension to what we're doing here, like deepen that crease a little bit. So I'm gonna take this color here with the Wayne Goss number 17 brush. And I'm gonna go with this guy here. It's called uh, En Fuego, this guy. Oh, En Fuego. I'm gonna put my brush there a few times. And I'm gonna bring that to my, to the outer part of my crease. And, uh, yeah, to the outer view of my eye. Do you see that? Do you see how our eye is becoming alive? So we put these warm colors on it. And I'm trying to keep it just down here, like the outer third of my eyes. I don't want to bring it in too far. Mm -hmm. That is pretty. I'm gonna put a little. I'm gonna make it a little, little tiny bit, tiny bit deeper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, a smaller brush. This is the Wayne Goss uh, brush 19. It's kind of a Basically an eyeshadow brush, kind of more for detail because it's smaller. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of this guy here, which is ashes. A little tiny bit of ashes. And I'm gonna keep ashes uh, like in the very, very corner here. I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take a clean brush. I'm using now a MAC 217 and just blend everything. Blending in everything to make sure that everything looks cohesive and blended and diffused. All colors are, yeah, blending in, meshing in nicely. Let me see how it's. Ooh. 
Ooh. Let's take another clean brush, Morphe M521, and blend everything. Making sure that everything is very blended that you can't see where one color ends and the other one starts. That's for you. <laughs> I decided to open this channel um, uh, just as a, you know what, just as a pastime hobby, something I'm gonna do just to entertain myself, because I like to keep myself busy and entertained, maybe share with you what I think I know and maybe learn from each other here. So. Hopefully you like the content of my channel. I'm gonna be doing lots of uh, product reviews here too because I have quite an extensive uh, makeup and skincare collection. So basically, uh, yeah, I'm doing this for fun. Yeah, now we're even. <laughs> so now that we have applied the eyeshadow on both our eyes, and uh, I'm using this one, this brush here, that's, uh, a JD Weighty Luxy brush, collaboration brush. I'm using this side here, but you can use whatever brush works for you. Taking those two lighter colors in the palette, which are Ounce and Chaser, using those two, and I'm putting those two colors on my brow bone. And after I do that, I like going back with a clean brush, and I like blending everything together. So there are no harsh lines between the brow bone color we just put there and the crease color we have. We already had it in there. If you are a fan of eyeliner, you need to get this. These are the best eyeliners by far that I've ever tried. The Marc Jacobs um, gel eye pencils. They are amazing. And this one is in the color Mist Me. Mist Me? Yeah. So I'm gonna lighten that purple that I put in there. I'm gonna lighten it up with this uh, lighter violet. Violet. No. So we need to balance these eyes. It's looking way too heavy on the top and there's nothing on the bottom. So we're gonna put some color on the under eye here. So I'm gonna take this brush. I'm taking my MAC 213 brush, this guy here. Ooh, let's go with the color Cayenne, just this guy here. I'm gonna just dab it a few times in there, tap the X's, and I'm gonna, yep, go here. Go to town. You hope that I'm, I'm bringing something positive to whoever is on the other side there looking at what I'm doing here. If I'm not, let me know and I'll try to make things work for you. And bringing it all the way in, but not too, too far in. And now I'm gonna blend. I'll take my Wayne Goss number 18 brush and I'm gonna take a little bit more of that low blow color. I'm gonna blend the edges. Look at that, I'm liking it. It's kind of a warm, smoky eye. So I have applied mascara off camera and this is what I used. But I don't I don't care right now about adding too much volume to my natural lashes because we're gonna put be putting some falsies. So anyways, let's apply fake lashes and uh, you know what? Bear with me because this is, yeah, this can be bumpy. This can be a bumpy ride. Anyways, I'm, today I'm using the Sweetheart Lashes, these guys here. I like using fluffy yet light lashes, like medium to light, because my eyelids are not that big and my eyes are a little um, hooded. I already cut them to the length that I wanted them because you know that I already used them. <laughs> when I did my makeup a few hours ago. <laughs> yeah, gee, I was so disappointed when I realized that I wasn't filming the audio. Oh, I used the Duo Glue, and that is my most favorite glue. I have tried so many other glues out there in the market, like higher end ones, and I go back to the Duo Glue, Lash Glue, because it does do the job. When my lashes are ready, 
I basically go from the top and I come down onto my, my I, I put my lashes on the very bottom of my natural lashes, huh? That's what I like doing. You be very careful when you're using tweezers close to your eyes, because if you poke your eye, you could be in serious trouble, so you don't do it at home, okay? Promise me you won't. Okay, my lashes are in. Now we're gonna do our face. Now we're gonna add some dimension to this flat face. Grabbing my Ida brush, which I really like from NARS. My Hula bronzer, which is a product that I love for contouring. It is one of my favorite contouring products. And I'm gonna carve my cheeks with this. Just gonna go to the hollow of my cheek and I'm gonna create the illusion that I have high sculpted cheekbones. And with this brush, I just place the product because I'm gonna go later with another brush and blend it in. So I just place the product right there, see? And I'm, I carve my jawline. I believe I have a cut jawline just to give the impression that my jawline is all defined and beautiful. <laughs> And I do the same with my nose. So what I do is I just put a couple lines on the sides of my nose. And then put a little bit on the tip there just to shorten my nose. And yeah, that's basically what I do with my hula. Then I take a blending brush. And in this case, I'm gonna be using this guy here, the Vivillion Tools brush in 990. I love this brush because it's, not only it's angled, but it's, see it's slanted, but it's flat, which doesn't move my contour product, doesn't move, my contour product stays in place when I blend with this, that's what I mean. So yeah, we are enjoying our very nice summer that we're having here in, in Fort St. John. And we try enjoying the, the the most we can because it doesn't last long and then comes the winter. The winter can be extremely long and harsh here. So they, our winters are from, like I said, from October. Oh yeah, by Halloween we have, we usually have snow on the ground by Halloween. You see the poor kids wearing their costumes under their parkas. When the snows, See how it, I, now I give the impression that I have nice high cheekbones. See, a more defined jawline. My nose look is looking straighter. Yeah, it's all the magic of contour. Now I want to warm up my face a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, this Mac 134 brush, this guy here. And I'm gonna take my NARS, this guy here. See, not letting them, oh yeah, I hit pan. I need to buy another one soon. So I'm gonna bronze my face. So I, I, what I do is I go above that uh, contour that I just did and I apply a bit of this product just to warm up my cheeks. Yeah, warm up my cheeks, then I go on the side and I bring it all the way up to my forehead and it is so hot in here that I'm sweating <sighs> so how are you liking it I'm looking all bronzed like oh like I've been in the Sun without sunblock yeah I wish I did that but I don't <laughs> it's so hot in here guys mm-hmm yeah, I think we are good. You know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little story here. This is my new, this is a room that I just repurposed for this thing here to film my videos and to have all my makeup and all my stuff. Soon I'll have a, another background. When I get the room ready, I'm gonna take that backdrop and I'm just gonna show you my room in the background. But for now, because it's a work in progress, I have a whole mess back there behind the backdrop. Uh, it's gonna be that way. Anyways, 
The light, the lighting theme and filming is extremely complicated to figure out the amount of light that I need for my videos. And I find that I'm still missing something. So I guess it's something that I'll have to figure out later on as I film videos. But right now I'm not feeling the light that I have around me that much. Let me say it that way. So now I'm gonna apply a little bit of this cult product, which is MAC Melba blush. I'm gonna take a little bit of that with my MAC 129 brush. MAC Melba the blush. And I'm gonna put that on my cheeks. It's a very universal color. It's kind of a dusty rose, but it's not too pink. It's not too peachy. So it's, it's amazing. It's pretty neutral. And I think it complements what we have going on. Yeah. And what I do is then I take a bigger brush, a fluffy big brush, again, the 134, and I blend everything in. There's no product in this. So I just use it to blend. My, so that my blush blends in my blush, yeah, blends in with the contour and the bronzing product that we've already put in. How are you liking it? I think it's looking cute. Yeah. So now our face is almost finished, but we need to put the cherry on the top, and you know what that is? That is... Da, 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 da. I, this is my favorite step when I'm doing my makeup. Oh God, look what we're gonna be using today. The Anastasia Nicole Guerrero palette, the Glow Kit, which is this beauty here. This is a product I like using when I'm doing my makeup to go out at nights because I find that it has speckles of, let's not, let's not fool ourselves. It does have speckles of sparkle in it. So during the day, I don't like that. I prefer that if I'm going out at nights. So now we're gonna take, uh, this time we're gonna use, I'm gonna mix Glow Getter and Kitty Cat. So I'm gonna go like this, dab a little bit of this and that one there. And I'm gonna apply that on the top of my cheekbones. I love this. Let's go again. You know what I feel like? Just taking a dip into this highlighter, like highlighting my whole body, my whole self. And I always put a little tiny bit of my chin up too much, just a little bit. Good, are we glowing? I think we are. So I take that fluffy brush again, and I make sure that everything looks blended. I just blend everything in. Yep, we have just added the cherry on the top. So now that we have our whole face done, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna paint some lips. We're gonna be using the Smashbox, uh, this Always On Liquid Lipstick in the shade Driver's Seat. I think it would be a very flattering color. By the way, this is one of my most favorite uh, liquid lipstick formulas. Uh, this thing stays on all day. It doesn't get crusty if you apply it properly. Because the right way of, sorry, of applying liquid lipsticks is to put a thin, a first thin layer on your lips and if necessary you can go with a second layer i like the applicator on this thing because it's not too long which i feel gives me more, more control as to what i'm doing just correcting those lines there and you know what oh god i was probably out of frame let's 
do the last thing, which is apply some Fix Plus so that all the makeup we put on our face looks more natural, more meshed in. So let's do that. So I put a few pumps, not too many. And after I apply my Fix Plus, I go in with a little bit of a, this guy here. Because I want my skin to look luminous, I'm going to put a few mists of the Tatcha Luminous Skin. This thing I do like, it, it gives a nice glow to my skin. You don't want to put too much of this because you can start looking oily pretty quick. So I'll just go with, yep. And we're done. Bye. See ya.